All right, so the we need to spend a little bit of time talking about some of our setup on Facebook. There's a lot to look at here and a lot to use and a lot to learn. So I'm going to mention important settings and items in the About screen uh, for more effectiveness. Then we can talk about posting types and posting advice and such, and then more effective ways to reach an audience. So for the moment here, uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the About screen. If you have the button there, About, you can look at About. This is where I last left you uh, during the break. But this is the screen here where you can go back and change your category. If you want to change the name of the business, the at username, which is, I don't know why they change that name. That's the address. That's your Facebook.com address. Uh, so if you want to create an, a Facebook address, you can do that at some point. Again, if this is just a testing account, don't do it. You're going to steal your own name. Then we've got... What would that look like if you did it? Well, it's going to be your Facebook address. Instead of having this gibberish address up here, exactly. I'm going to have a real address, Victor's Bakery. Right now, it's facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery slash 34656 blah blah blah. So question. I, I want this simple, simple kind of address. What is it after? It's not an email. Exactly. That's the confusing part. I don't know why they changed it. It's the, it's the address that you get up there, even though they're calling it an at name, which looks like an email, which looks like a Twitter address. But it's your Facebook address. So, Victor, if we've already used our personal name for our personal account mm -hmm. and we're doing business as ourself, um, you can do that. You can, can do we, that. Can we use the um, our same name for the at? Because I thought we could not use it if we. If it's you could taken use it. Page. You could use it if it's not taken, uh, but we are limited to no spaces and no punctuation, like all apostrophes, run together, and so all run together. So if it has, if that name has been used somehow elsewhere, then you can't use it, and you and might have to verify own, it a little bit. Elsewhere includes our own personal page, our own personal page as well? Yeah, this is, like I said earlier, this is a unique name. There can only be one in the world about it. And punctuation, dots, and all that doesn't help. I think you can use dots, maybe, but um, not exclamation points and not quotes and all of that. <laughs> All right, so then we've got start date. This is pretty optional, but here's a way for you to put when did this business start, when was it founded. The value of this is not too great. I don't think this is much of an importance. This is not really going to help your search and findability. There are many other factors that will help you get found. So if you want to put there, this is when we were founded, then you put the, the year and the date and all of that. If you have an address for the business, that might be useful to put there because, again, legitimate businesses are set up legitimately. An illegitimate business, a fake account, a spam account, doesn't have this contact information. It's like in the real world, if I get some sort of letter in the mail, if I go to my post if I go to my mailbox and I get a letter and there's some letter from some place that doesn't have a phone number, doesn't have a street address, it's going in the recycle bin. Here in the digital world, the more real information you put out there, the better to make you more legitimate. If you don't want to put your real address because I have, I'm running my business out of my, out of my office at home, I don't want to put my real street address there, so what I could do is put a uh, put a P.O. box. I can put a P.O. box number.
Oh, okay, that's right, drive. So you can put a P.O. box here if you don't want to put your real address. You, of course, need to go invest in a P.O. box. It's about $30 to $80 a year, depending on the size. You don't have to put this in, but again, this shows you more of a legitimate business when you have this information. Hours. Well, I'm an online business. I'm open 24-7, so I might not need to put anything here. But if you do have a real business on Main Street, for example, you can set that. Although it does have the option about always open. You can set that if you'd like. Short description. That's what I wrote when I was first setting this all up. And if I want to change that, I can go back to short description and keep changing it. Uh, Impressum is not going to apply to most of us here. The Impressum, Impressum is some sort of European requirement. It says here, if you're in Austria, Germany, or Switzerland, then it matters to you. And basically, for, for people in those countries, I, I guess they have some laws that have to specify who is, be, who is behind this Facebook page. Uh, here, any person, any anonymous person can create any account in the U.S. But it looks like in Austria, and Germany, and Switzerland, you have to say who is behind this page. We're not in those countries last time I checked, so you don't have to fill those in. If you do business in those countries, I suppose you have to fill those in. I don't know, but I'm not going to because I'm not in those countries. Long description. Here's a spot for you. Here's where you can write that essay about your business. <laughs> and literally, literally, because there is no limit to this, look at this. I'm writing a lot. And it's saying, great. I, don't, I wouldn't worry about, however, putting a huge description here. This has a purpose to help you get found, but this is one of many factors that will help you get found by your potential customers. So maybe if I take the time to write a short paragraph, three sentences, that's fine. You don't have to write five paragraphs of content here, because what will help you get found better is your actual content, the pictures you post the videos you post, the articles and links you post, that's what's going to help you get found. This, someone may look at it one time and never come back. But your posts that you're posting once a week, once a day, whatever, those are the ones that are more valuable and will help you get found. So what I could do is, you know, founded in 1989, our business believes in blah blah blah. I'm going to write real words, real sentences here because then people may search for you know, local business, may search for family-owned company, may search for authentic recipes, whatever I'm writing in this long description. But don't beat yourself up writing five paragraphs here. One paragraph is fine. We've got mission. So if you're a business and you have a business plan, part of the business plan is a mission statement. If you don't have that, basically a mission statement is, I'll write this in my notes, mission statement. Why are you in business? Why do you have this company? Why are you trying to reach an audience? And this is not quite the class to go into a lot of detail about this. That's the SEO class, the search engine optimization class. We have an activity in that class where we, where we, where we discuss this about the why are you in business. That's a little bit too lofty to get into it in this class at the moment. but. Victor's Bakery. Okay, wh what's our mission? Uh, to share, to sell the best and healthiest baked goods for you and your family. Perfectly fine mission statement. If uh, you can get wordy or artistic about it, that's fine. Why are you 
in this business. So we exist to, uh, what's a nicer word than sell? We exist to sell the best baked goods at the most fair prices and with the finest ingredients. That's a mission statement. You can get examples of mission statements all over the web. If you go to some website about whatever business you like, let me show you an example here. If you go to our college's website, at the very bottom, there is a mission statement here. San Diego Continuing Ed commits to student success and community enrichment by providing accessible, equitable, and innovative quality education and support services. You can go read more to read the full version. That could have easily have been, had said, continuing education gives free classes. Perfectly fine. But notice how a lot of times these mission statements are a little bit more detailed, a little bit more wordy or artistic. And this is, this is not the only way that people will get found. But if I go to Google and start typing in, you know, uh, local education, free education, uh, community services, this site might appear because those keywords are in the mission. You can go off to just about every other website out there, go look around on their About screen, sometimes it's in the Investor Relations screen. Uh, mission. Why are you in this business? There's a founded and there's a start date. Honestly, I don't know the big difference between that. Start date, founded. Um, doesn't even give you a little help to explain. Enter founding date. Well, I guess this is more of a bit of a little founding story about your business. Again, the point of any of these is to write keywords to help you get found. And I'm not saying to copy and paste the exact same thing you wrote everywhere then that's not of enough a variety of keywords to help you get found. If you have any awards, any awards you can put those in. What are some products? This is not a very effective product system though. It's not about putting your products and prices and click here to buy. It's just a list of your products. Yes, keywords to help you get found, but I wouldn't spend a lot of time in this product screen here because I'm not going to put all my 50 products that I sell here. I'll put a few of them. There's a few keywords that might help me get found. So if I quickly ask a question, mm -hmm. so I already have an existing online reservation website. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm really looking at. This is not Well, from what you've just told me, you know, you're booking trips. trips. That's a key word, booking trips. Booking hotel you're booking hotel rooms. That's a key word. You're trying to find the best hotel deals. That's a key word. Don't think of keyword literally as one word. A phrase is still a key word. So if you're booking vacation adventures, that's a key word. Or if you have, you know, New York hotel services, that's a key word. So everything that you're doing, if it's a service, you can still find keywords for it. And definitely during the break, we can talk a little bit more on one, but think about it in what you do, those are keywords. If you have a phone number, you can put that in. If you have an email, you can put that in. Again, you should put these things in because these are ways for you to appear legitimate and get found and get contacted. If you don't, you don't want to put your home phone number because I'm running my business from my home office, you can get uh, a free Google Voice phone number. Uh, I remind me because I teach too many classes, but have I mentioned Google Voice in this class? No. Okay. Google Voice. You can go over at your, at your pace, at your leisure, go to voice.google.com to get a free phone number. It's been around a while. I'm thinking at 
almost maybe 10 years now, which means with something that's out there and for free, you may not get the perfect phone number. But you'll get a phone number with the local area code if you choose, and it's a free phone number that then you can start to give that phone number to people. Put that phone number on your business card, put that number on your Facebook or your, or your website. People call that Google Voice number, and you can have it set up that it then automatically rings your, your main phone number, or it rings your home number, one cell phone, someone else's cell phone, it can ring three phones at once. People will never know what this phone number is here, but they will know what your Google Voice number is. That way I'm not giving my personal number away. And if you don't want it to actually contact you, you can set it up pretty easily for voicemail. So someone calls that Google number and it says, Welcome to Victor's Bakery. We'll answer your call as soon as you leave us a message. Please leave a message. And so someone will leave a message there. You'll get the notification on your phones. Then you'll reply to them at your leisure through the Google Voice number. They'll never see your real number. We don't have time to talk about how that's done. You can explore that on your own. Go to that address and go through the process of getting a free phone number. Uh, email, what I would recommend regarding email, I'll say, I'll say no, I'll say yes. Victorsbakery at gmail.com, no. Instead you want something like sales at victorsbakery.com. What's the difference? You don't want one of these free email accounts. You don't want a free Gmail. You don't want a Yahoo mail. You don't want Hotmail. You don't want a Cox email or AT&T. You don't want your real business piggybacking on some free email service. That's what the spammers do. A legitimate business is going to pay to buy victorsbakery.com, is going to buy victorswebdesigns.biz. A real business is going to have you know, something like um, uh, contact at mybestshopsd.biz, whatever my website is. I'm going to buy a real email domain. Don't get a Gmail, don't get a Hotmail for business purposes. For your personal, of course, whatever you want. But, uh, you know, if I'm uh, if I'm amazing web designs at cox.net, not so amazing that you can't buy your own domain. <laughs> now this is not free, of course. This is five to fifty dollars a year. There's a huge range to buy your email address. We don't have time to talk about it in the class. We can talk about it in one on one. But think about that. If you have something at yahoo.com. Um, that's not quite professional. You want to get a, a professional address. This official page, you don't really have to worry about it. This is that enter the official brand, celebrity, or organization your page is about. Let's say this. Let's say I create yet another Justin Bieber fan page. <laughs> so I'm going to write here that my page is a representation of the official Justin Bieber brand page to show that I'm, you know, about that page. Us, that we have our own business, we are the official representative of our own business, so you don't need to put anything there. And then your Facebook unique ID. So this is all our page info. You may have more, you may have less. Any general questions here before we move on to other screens? If it's very different than what mine is, it might be better to talk during the breaks, but those are some general ideas to fill in on the page info. Okay, if you, if you see along the top, you have the Facebook icon, which always takes you to your main personal login, your main personal home page. You know, that takes me back to all the personal stuff of mine, so I just need to make sure with that triangle you can very easily accidentally share something that I thought I was putting on the business and put it on my personal. 
You just need to make sure that you've switched to your business page, either on the left side where you see the business, or if you don't see it on the left, it should be on the top right triangle. I manage more than one, so for me, I have to go over to see more. These are all the ones that I help manage, and then I have to pick the business. So I'm on the business. Uh, they've changed something that I, I don't like at all. Uh, for a long time, you would be able to easily differentiate, am I using my business page, am I using my personal profile? Because on the top right, you would see the icon of the business. They've been changing that so now that always you see your personal icon. Uh, not everyone might have it yet, they're changing it little by little. But on mine, I would remember switching over to the business, and on the top it would say like, okay, you're running the business right now. It'll still say my name at all times. I don't know why they've changed that, but that's a little bit of annoyance. So I just need to make sure that, I'm, that I've clicked on my business, because then you will see these tabs here that you don't see on personal. If I'm on my personal business, my personal profile, I don't see those tabs up there. Right? I see things related to um, personal stuff. I need to be at my business page to see that sub-menu. From pages, we will look at what all this stuff on the screen is soon. I then see messages. I can send messages and I can get messages from customers. I can carry out a, you know, a conversation, messaging between customers. The point of that, of course, is to do customer service. If someone has a problem with my business, they can contact me on Facebook, and we can try to figure out the issue. I'll see messages here. Notifications. Every network has notifications that tells you someone liked your page, someone commented on your picture, someone did this, someone did that, someone followed you. Notifications. I will see notifications on this screen. It'll tell me my likes, who liked my page, who commented, all of these activities and requests. So who mentioned my page, who shared my page. We'll see why all of these things are valuable a little bit later, but the notification screen keeps you up to date with what's happening on your page or about your page. Insights. Um, not everyone may see this, but I think they're changing it. It used to be that you needed, uh, you needed to have a certain amount of likes for it to give you any insights. It used to be, I believe, 30 likes. You needed 30 likes before you can start to get some special information. On mine, it seems to be showing it. On yours, it may or may not. If it's not showing the Insights tab yet, you might need to get more activity on your page. Insights is telling you your activity. In the last seven days, in the last 28 days, etc., this is what happened. I got these number of actions, page views, etc. Let me switch over to a different account just to show you what it might look like if there is activity. With a page that is brand new, there isn't much to look at, but with a page that has some activity, we might tell you here how many people have viewed the page within the last week, how many likes did you get? Engagement, I'll explain all of these, of course. And then in detail, we posted these items, and this is the amount of activity that they got. You don't get that from a personal page, a personal profile. It doesn't need it. Facebook doesn't believe that a person needs to know how many likes their cat picture got. But we need to know how many pictures, how many likes our cat picture got when I'm trying to sell cat products. So we'll look at that insight screen in detail a little later. Publishing tools. Um, this will show you everything that you've published and, and created and saved and so forth. Um, because like any social network, you share something and then something new comes out today, tomorrow, next week. Something new comes out after that, something new. There's always something new. 
And so there's like just a stream of content. If you need to get back to one of your old pictures to share it again, you can find it here. If you need to go look up what's that what's that video that I uploaded last month? I want to I want to share it again. It's going to be in your library here. We'll see about drafts and it, and scheduled posts in a moment. We have the help system here and I would uh, I would look through the help system at some point. Remember we only talk about one network per day. We can't cover everything so under the help system you'll learn everything about every aspect of Facebook and there's also going to be the part where you can go ask Facebook directly a question. Please help me with something. They do help you uh, via email. <laughs> and finally Let's look at settings. There's a lot of settings here. I, I won't mention all of them, but I'll mention a few settings that I think are, are, are valuable to you. Under settings, you have all of these subsections. But I'm under the general subsection. Favorites, don't worry about favorites. Page visibility, if you want to hide your page temporarily from Facebook, you can unpublish it. Visitor posts. This is a good one to, to look at. Um, it says anyone can publish to the page. Anyone can add photos and videos to the page. Right now, Facebook is set up as the most public method, meaning that any person can write anything they want on my Facebook, which means any person can write good things or bad things on my Facebook page at the moment. Uh, this goes back to are you running your social media as a dialogue or as a monologue? If we chose to say, no one can write anything on my page, well then that's the monologue. You're only talking to the audience. You're never having a back and forth conversation. Well, there's a halfway point of full dialogue and full monologue. If you edit here, right, we have the full dialogue. Anyone can write any crazy thing on my page. <laughs> no one can write any good thing on my page. Those are the extremes. In the middle, review posts by others before they're published. That's the one I recommend. Let people comment on your page, but you check it first before it shows up. That way if people are just being mean or writing off-topic things or dumb things that don't matter, they never will show up. They never will, never will bring down the quality of your page. It is more work because then now you're going to get notifications. You need to go to the notifications and see here's a new comment. I read it. It's terrible comment. Delete or ignore. Now you have to take that extra step to moderate content on your page. If you don't want to deal with that, you've got enough to do, then disable that. But then you're in a monologue, not a dialogue. And I think the big companies can afford to, to be a a monologue, but not us little companies. Coca-Cola doesn't have to answer their clients. Nike doesn't have to answer. You know, these big companies don't have to answer because one disgruntled person is not really gonna damage their business. For us, one disgruntled person is terrible. That one disgruntled person is a lost sale or bad word of mouth. So I would recommend let people write what they want, but we're gonna moderate it so then that we can uh, get the best result. Do you want to let people add text or also photo and video? That's up to you. I don't have any positive or negative to say there. But nowadays, a lot of people are really liking to share photos and video. So if you take that away from them, they may not want to post anything. Maybe they're going to give you a really great compliment on your page. They were going to take a selfie with your product, but because you took the ability away for them to put photos, they, they don't bother. And oftentimes people that are more People that want to write something negative are the ones that are going to take the time and effort to write something negative. The people that are going to write something positive, they're too happy to write something, so they forget to write something. Just what, what, one, one, one at a time? Yes. When you, when you have, so, but, but when you have the review box selected, if they post photos and videos, do you not then get to still review that? No, you still you okay. still review that. Okay. It's just that if you turn that off, they, people will only be able to write text. Okay. You still have to review, review it. it Here, you get to review it. You still get to review it. Okay. Yeah. 
Question. You can, yeah, you can also control it after the fact. If you if you don't want to deal with moderation, you let everyone write whatever they want. And then at some point you can go back in and delete what is not relevant. Yes? Do you have different options here based on the type of business you want? Most likely, I think people, depending on what they've chosen on the type of page elsewhere, you might have different abilities here. So I would recommend reviewing. Yes? When they write a post, does it get them a message saying, That's a good question. I'm not sure, since I really only look at it from our side. I could probably do a little test to figure that out, but um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it tells them they can't, they won't see it until it's moderated. I have to look into that. Yes. On the notifications, uh, like I have a landline, if you wanted to a text number to your mobile, how do you set that up? Where you, you choose email or? Um, Where, uh, what screen are we looking at? Um, so say you, you, you post and then you want to get notified, but where do you, click, how do you, notified? you get notified when you're logged into Facebook. It'll give you a number at the top here that you've got notifications to deal with. And it will notify you on the app. It's not really going to notify you via text message or phone call. It's going to be on the app or when you're logged in. What's that? Possibly, if it's in the best interest for the company. Reviews. On mine, it says reviews are turned off. If I would like people to give my page a review, I can turn that on or off. That's up to you to decide what you like there, but as more and more people use Facebook, a few years ago, you know, it was, a, it was amazing when they had reached 1 billion users. Now they're at 1.7 billion users. And every few years or months, there's some controversy about Facebook. One just started yesterday. And uh, people are always saying, I'm going to quit Facebook, I'm done. And they don't, because everyone's on Facebook. It's got a critical mass. I'm not going to leave Facebook because all my friends and family are there. So we grudgingly stay. So then it might be valuable to let people review your site. Yes, you might already have reviews on Yelp. But as more people use Facebook and they want to review you positively or negatively on Facebook, that might be valuable to do. In the SEO class, I go into more detail, but let me take a little detour to mention here about reviews. On reviews. Okay, reviews are good. <coughs> Bad reviews are good. Let me put in quotes. Because a good review obviously is good because it shows that someone enjoyed your service, your product, your business, and they told you about it. The goodness about that is that then other people see that. Popularity breeds popularity. <coughs> positivity breeds positivity. And so if people are seeing that you're getting good reviews, people will be apt to also give good reviews or give you the benefit of the doubt or buy your product, etc. So positivity breeds positivity. Bad reviews are an opportunity to get a good review. If someone was so mad that they went home and then trashed you on Yelp or Facebook, they had probably a legitimate reason to do so. Bad customer service that day. Some One of your waiters or something was having a bad day, it reflected in the service, and the person felt it, and they go home and give you a bad review. That's an opportunity because you get notified. John Smith gave you a one-star review. You get notified. You know who did it, so that then you can deal with it to get a good review from them. This, however, I have to say, to fix a bad review, Do not bribe or beg. <clears throat> I see a bad review that they came to my bakery and they bought a cupcake and they took it home and then they were about to eat it and they saw a tooth inside the cupcake. Well, 
bad experience. They gave me one star review and they said, this bakery is terrible. I found a tooth in my cupcake. It's probably not even a human tooth. And here then, terrible, one star. So, okay. I get identified, I get notified, and it tells me John Smith gave you a one-star review. I'm not going to reach out to them and say, we're so sorry, here's a free birthday cake next time on your birthday. We're so sorry, we're going to fix this, please accept 10% off next time. We're so sorry, we're not going to bribe them, we're not going to give them something for free to fix the issue. We're not going to beg also, we're, we're so sorry, uh, you know... Uh, please uh, accept our condolences and whatever. There's a fine line here between what I'm about to say in a moment with begging, but bribe is the easy one. Don't give something away for free to fix something. Don't give away coupons or discounts or something for free. Because, unfortunately, people, unscrupulous people, have made the, uh, the discovery that less savvy businesses fall for false reviews. If I've never been to that business, I can still go in and write a review said, this was terrible, I had terrible customer service and I want my money back. And some business is going to believe that and say, we're so sorry, here's your free meal next time, tell your server. I just gave away a free meal for someone that never visited my restaurant. So people take advantage of that. The unscrupulous people take advantage of our fear of bad reviews and our good nature to try to fix it by us giving away something. So never give away something to fix a bad review. To fix a bad review, acknowledge the problem, apologize, resolve to do better. But don't say, we're sorry you didn't have a good experience. Next time, tell the server uh, this coupon and get a free result, a free cupcake. Don't do that. You're going to say, we're sorry that our standards of quality were not up to par as they always are. We hope you give us another chance and see that Victor's Bakery is the best bakery in San Diego and we can do better next time. You know, Acknowledge that they had a problem, apologize and resolve to do better, but don't give something away. Um, that works on the Facebook reviews, the Yelp reviews, anywhere where you get reviews. There's reviews over on Google Plus also. So there's reviews all over the place now. So that's something maybe you never thought of because you don't have a Yelp. If you activate, people can leave reviews. Now you're doing Yelp, you're doing Facebook's version of Yelp. Now you're going to need to deal with disgruntled customers and gruntled customers. Disgruntled and gruntled. The opposite of that. If someone gives you a good review, don't just smile and move on. Reply to that as well and say thank you for your continued patronage. Please tell your friends. You know, something positive upon their positive review is good. If you say nothing at all, that might not be so bad. But if you are active and keep that dialogue of social media open, that's always a good thing. So you can decide if you want to deal with reviews or not. When we set up the target audience, uh, if we created our account, we can get back to it here. We have the ability to target each individual post to a new audience. Because if I set my whole Facebook page to be targeted to San Diego people between 18 and 24, that's what it's going to focus on. But if I want to post a picture that is only really re relevant to people in La Jolla, 40 to 50 years old, I can target that one post. If you activate this ability here, which notice it's not. Change the visibility of each individual post, Mine's off. Yours probably as well. If you turn that on, you will be able to target individual posts. So I do recommend that one. You may need to tailor the post every time. Mm. 
messages. As I said, we've got a messages screen. If you want customers to send you private messages to deal with an issue, customer support, you can turn that on or off. At the moment it is turned on. If you don't want people to send you private messages on Facebook about your business, you can turn it off. I would recommend to leave it on, but it's still up to you to decide if you want to get into that level of customer service. Tagging ability, don't worry about that. Others tagging, don't worry. Country restriction, that's up to you if you want your country, if you want your page to be hidden or visible to only certain countries. Page restriction, right now anyone can see it, but if you do need to limit it because your product might be for you know adults only or alcohol related, we can target that. There's not a lot of nuance there, but it's basically ages of you know teens or or adulthood or alcohol. Page moderation. Um, this one is sort of not that necessary if you've activated the first icon at the top about post moderation first. If you've already activated this one about I have to review all the posts, this one is not, is not that useful. If you have not activated this one, then it might be important to turn on the uh, page moderation, meaning keywords that are blocked if people comment on your page and they write certain words that you list here, those words, that comment will be automatically blocked from appearing until you confirm it. I don't think there's a limit here. You can put commas. Here's another example. Let's say I'm a uh, business about cats and I sell cat products and so I don't want any comments about dogs to appear on the page. So I can put that, com that keyword there and that comment will be blocked. So different reasons why you might want to use this page moderation. If you want a profanity filter, you can turn that on or off. There's different levels of it. Who decides the profanity? Well, Facebook says it's the community of Facebook users itself. Similar page suggestions, that's fine. Multiple languages. This one depends on, on your audience and your product. If you would like to post something in multiple languages, you can activate that. Um, your post will be shown to your followers in a language that is most relevant to them. I'm not sure if that will automatically translate your posts to other languages or let you write it in different languages so that it goes to the right audience. I'm not quite sure. Can I just ask a question about that? Yes. Uh, which is what I'm struggling with. Uh, <clears throat> yes. I speak English language. Mm -hmm. Because it's Spanish and French and everything. But see, the majority of my friends and A translation service. Well, unfortunately, a lot of these uh, more complex things like multiple languages, they're not free. A lot of times, someone can get hired to do the multiple translations. There's many businesses out there that try to solve that problem. To my knowledge, I, I don't have a lot of experience in that because we mostly target an English audience, so I don't have the answer for multiple languages. But what I'm seeing here, perhaps, by activating that, that will help me 
to reach more of those audiences. I don't know if this will specifically let me target a language or if it will translate it for me or it will give me suggestions. I, I don't know. I don't use it. I don't have the experience to say. Perhaps if we go over to the help system and, and look up in help, how does multiple languages work? There might be an answer there. I su suspect there will be some way, but probably not for free because this is complex. No regular machine is going to translate one language into another language and keep the nuance of my speaking. So I don't have a big answer, but I would check the help system and I would turn that on and see what extra feature you get by turning it on. Hmm. Yeah, there are some abilities that we get here, so I think the best answer would come, however, from Facebook themselves in their help center here, and we would look up multiple languages and see what it can tell us. Comment ranking, uh, that's fine. Content distribution, okay. Uh, this one, this one seems to be a new one. So if you're sharing your content online as a business, most likely you want your content to be seen by as many people as possible. I want as many people to see it within my target audience. And so this seems to be that uh, deactivate the ability for Facebook to reach more people, for your content to be downloaded by more people. If I was a person and I'm sharing something to only certain people, I might not want that. I might not want my content downloadable or, visit, or visible by everywhere of Facebook. But as a business, I probably want that. I probably want to reach more people that would care in my target audience. I can download an archive of everything that I've uploaded to Facebook. So I can download the whole page. If I've got more than one Facebook page, I can merge them together. If someone created a Facebook page for me before, and I've got maybe three likes on it, and I'm creating it brand new, and I want to keep this one but not really delete the likes on the old one, I can merge them together. Um, so there's going to be a process there. And if this is just a testing account that I'm not really going to keep, I can remove the page completely down here at the bottom. On the left side then, we've got a whole new section of messaging. This one, the settings here are, are fine if you want to go in to change some details. Uh, if someone sends your page a message, you can activate like these auto-responders. They're off at the moment. Uh, you can read what these are about. Do you use them at all? For, for one of the clients that we have, yes, because they get messages all the time. But for every other one, not really. Yeah, It's relevant to the business. Do you want to re reply to people automatically right away? You'll get the notification if you've got it, your, your the Facebook on your device. It'll pop up to tell you someone messaged you. So it's up to you to decide if you want auto responders. Victor, what was that response assistant? What, what was that? That was what I was saying, the autoresponder. It will automatically respond to a person once they've sent you a message. Post attribution. This shouldn't be uh, too big of a deal. It should be set to the proper one. But what this is saying is, if you're using Victor's Bakery, do you want it to say, Victor's Bakery liked this post. Victor's Bakery replied to this post. Or do you want it to show, you know, John Smith replied to this post. John Smith commented or liked. 
probably you want the first one, which is that the business is the one that is being active. So we'll leave that. Notifications, you can decide what to change here, but basically all notifications are turned on. You will get uh, notified here when you're logged into Facebook to all of these things that happen. You will get a notification about any messages. You will get an email. Oh, and apparently they do, they can send a text message if you don't want it to call to text message you because I have a landline, you just turn it off. That might be it here. Yeah. This uh, you might eventually get some of these extra features if uh, on your older page eventually, or I don't know. They might not ever put it on an old page. I don't know. It's up to yeah. Facebook. Page roles. This is a very important screen here. At the moment, I'm the only one that can post, that can share to Victor's Bakery. I'm the one that created it. I'm the only one that has access. If I want other people in my company to also be able to post a picture as the business on the business page, I add them here. If I want other people to help me answer all of these messages, I can add them here. If I want other people to be able to you know, create ads or do videos or whatever, I can give other managers access here. The other person, of course, needs their own Facebook page first, their own Facebook personal profile, and then they will get access. We have different levels of access. We have admin, which is what we are, that we created this page. It'll tell you what the different powers are. Admin can manage all aspects. Editor can do just about everything except what is not listed, and then lower and lower all the way down to analyst. An analyst can only see which admin created a post or comment and view insights. So an analyst cannot create a new post. An analyst cannot reply to people. <coughs> they can only see who posted something, what other manager posted, and the insights, how effective a post was. Most likely, you're going to let other people have editor access because admin is the highest one. Admin is the ability to add more admins. An admin could be the ability that if you have added other people and now you fire that person and they're disgruntled, they have the ability to go in and trash your Facebook until you remove them. So you might not want to give admin access to, except for like the really, really, really important people of the business. Editor should be good enough for most people. I would type in their name here or their email. If you already have a connection with them in, in Facebook, it'll pop up there. If it doesn't, put in their name or put in their email and they need a Facebook personal profile to use this. They don't have to have it set up. They don't have to have their high school in there. They don't have to use it to share funny cat pictures, but they have to have a Facebook account to be able to manage your business account, business page. Yes. So, um, if you do a personal Facebook, you don't you have it so that it's set up, but it's not uh, live or whatever. It's not out there. Yeah, you can have your personal one set up private, right. so no one will see it, no one can find it, and then you just use that as a stepping That's why stone. I can set up myself as the admin here because I don't have a personal. Okay. Yeah. So that personal Victor one, obviously, I haven't logged in. You know, twenty people are sending me twenty things in a in a notification message here. I haven't logged in. I don't use the personal Facebook. I just log in and do the business stuff and then when I'm done, log out. People in other pages. Um, don't worry about that one. There's the preferred page audience. That's again the place where I can change who can see my page. And right here based on, it's interesting that it doesn't quite show you this on the other screen, but here, based on who I've selected, this is an estimate of I can reach about 144,000 people. There's a 1 billion people on Facebook, yes, but I can have a legitimate business presence with 144,000 people as a clientele. And I'm not going to try to artificially get that up to a million estimate, because again, it's too many people to really target well. Through other things we'll talk about right after the break, we will see, well, okay, 
I'm not limited to only 144. I can reach a million people, and I'll show you how a little later. But based on our basic setup here, this is who most likely <coughs> will see my page because of the interests and my ages and my location. Apps, don't worry about apps. Question. I'm not sure, actually. Perhaps somewhere in the Facebook system it'll tell us that, but that's a good question. Is this just a number of people, or is it a number of active people? I'm not sure, but usually, the social media networks, usually they deal in active users, because that's what investors care about. Facebook is a publicly traded company. You can buy shares in Facebook. And therefore, it wants to do well by the investors, and therefore, it's going to hopefully put in proper values here. Although, like I just said, yesterday, Facebook revealed something embarrassing, which I'll talk about a little later. Um, so I don't know. It's probably active users. On month two of the class, next month, part two, we're going to talk about Instagram. Instagram, if you didn't know by now, is owned by Facebook. The good news about that is we will be able to use our Facebook account to also connect to our Instagram account and reach more people. But we'll talk all about that when we get to Instagram. Question? I'm sorry, back to where it said ask notes. notes. Mm -hmm. How is that different from a post? Um, I don't quite know because I don't use notes. Okay. We use posts and um, canvases and other posting types. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure. You can tag your friends in notes. See, why is it calling it friends if this is a business page? They can leave comments, notes. See, it's not even active. You have to activate this extra app. So yeah, it's like, I'm not wondering if, like, if there's a group of this, can't you just say can you Kind of sounds if this like is it. So that you can do this on target your personal profile because you have to have that to have the business page. But if you're on your business page, you can work your personal and your business from the business page? Would that be maybe what it's about? This I'm is not sure. Advice of your friend? I'm not sure. That's why I, I, friends are personal. I don't have a experience in this, so I don't have the best answer for it. And then all of the time that we've done this for clients, we never use the notes, and we've been fine. So I don't know if there's a big value to it. But what this screen is supposed to show is if you've activated extra little Facebook apps, they'll all be listed here. And uh, we can do pretty well without them. <laughs> so you might have an extra feature that might be useful. <laughs> it should be. So Facebook, Instagram apps, I mean uh, Instagram ads, we'll talk about that later. Featured, um, don't worry about that just yet. Cross-posting, this is a new one, I just saw it right now. Cross-posting is a way to share your videos across multiple pages. Cross-posting can only happen between pages that have added each other. Add or remove pages here to manage your cross-posting relationships. So, I can create many Facebook pages. I can create Victor's Bakery, and I can create Victor's Web Design and Victor's Art. I can create three different Facebook pages, and it looks like I can share a particular video from Victor's Art over to Victor's Bakery. My question is, why? <laughs> Victor's Art is about art, Victor's Bakery is about baking. So why would an art video relate to a baking page? Painting cupcakes. Painting cupcakes. Uh, but I do have a business, and a, I have two, multiple pages, and I do have things that could cross over. Yes, I, I was getting to that. Oh. That On the ones that I had just mentioned, they don't relate to each other, but I could have businesses that do relate to each other. This could be a possibility why I may want to share videos across platforms. I just saw that right now. I don't know all of the answers about it, but I, I'm going to go look at learn more at some point. But it seems to be a way to easily share your videos between your pages. You could do it before, but I guess this might be an easier way. So not much to say about that. I need to go to look at Learn More at some point. Page support inbox. Nothing here. Unless you've started to have some communication back and forth between Facebook, help, nothing shows up here. But if you 
reach out to them to ask for help for something, it'll show up here. Activity log, lastly, is just a place where you can see every single note that you've posted, every comment that you've gotten, everything that's been marked as spam, everything that you've done. Everything that you've done is listed there on Facebook all the way to the beginning of the moment you created the Facebook page. So these, this is the basic anatomy of the Facebook menu. We'll go back to pages, page that is, and this is where you can go back to at some point to add your company logo. There's a cover graphic here. We have to look up what's the size, but the size that we made for Twitter works pretty well for the size of Google+, which works pretty well for the size of Facebook. They're all a long rectangular image. And you can go get inspiration from other companies to see what should I put here. So if I go over to um, UCSD, let's say I'm going to go look up UCSD's Facebook page. Okay, it's a photo of graduates, and then it's a photo of the library. I'm going to go look up SDSU. SDSU has a photo of that building. If I look up uh, uh, San Diego, the city of San Diego, does San Diego have its own Facebook page? Um, pages. Padres. Well, let's look at the Padres. So on Padres, they've got um, someone about to get hit in the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> okay, look at the San Diego Film Festival. Just looking at what people are posting up there. And so uh, people are businesses. So notice it's often their logo. It's got to be square. Then there's pretty much free reign of what you can post up here, or uh, what you can put up here for your branding. Here's a few of the of the uh, directors, I suppose, or actors, part of this film festival. So it's a wide, it's a when wide is graphic. The, when is the film festival? Oh, uh, we we can sure. check that in a moment. Here, under then the Chargers, there's another graphic, and then again, their graphic has been cut off. Um, they should know that Facebook has, and Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus all have a proportional graphic, a square or round graphic. And yet they've uploaded their rectangular graphic and it's cut off. So just get some inspiration from searching anywhere else and, and see what are people posting here. So, you know, showing what's examples. Here's our, there's our district. We've got students and administrators and such. So your, uh, your branding, you need to do that at some point. Your graphic up there. Your logo. Fill out that about information. We're going to take one more break. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about posting types, and then we'll talk about the one weird trick to get more likes on Facebook. It's 12. We'll take a break until 12.10, and then we'll go on.